Hi, I'm Liz Haas and welcome to my creative workshop. This is where I actually come up with projects for you. And today I have a powder coated metal tumbler here and we're going to sandblast this. I'm gonna use photo resist film, I'm gonna paint it. And in addition to that, I'm gonna have a part two on doing a double image for this particular project. Let's talk about metal tumblers. They're great. Originally you would see the metal tumblers as a stainless and they were lasered, sandblasted, and then they started, uh, customers started adding a paint fill, one color and two color, very popular. But now we have all these powder coated tumblers and they're vibrant in color. They absolutely look beautiful. So what I'm doing today is I'm taking a design and I'm gonna wrap it around the whole tumbler here. And I know that's a little crazy, but hey, I never go small. We're gonna wrap it around, we're gonna sandblast the whole tumbler and we're gonna paint it. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you the steps. All right, let's talk about artwork. For this particular project, this is my original artwork. And you can see it's fairly large. Uh, my petals are all blasted because they're black and in this, in this process, black equals blast. And what I like to do is I like to take my printed artwork and I like to kind of match it up and lay it down on my surface. So that way I get an idea of what this is gonna look like. And I'm looking at this and I'm seeing these big leaves and all these um, petals here, but the petals are black. So what happens is I'm actually gonna be blasting away these petals and I'm blasting away the color and the whole reason for this whole project is to have the color show through. So I went ahead and I modified the project, modified the artwork to an outline and you can see this here. So here is my outline of the petals and I think this looks a lot better. My petals now have color and, and it's a pretty color. So you'll notice also that my artwork here is created into a curve versus this artwork is a rectangle. So if I were to take, keep my artwork as a rectangle and kind of wrap this around, I have a lot of extra masking at the bottom because this is not a straight line. My, I actually have some shape to this particular tumbler. It's wide and then it tapers down. So I've made my job a little bit easier by putting it on a curve. And this is a good tip. If you're, if you're blasting text on a tumbler and you have a shape to it and you're going, your text is going all the way around, put your text on a curve. And when you line up your artwork, the curve shape will actually straighten out your text. So that's just a little tip for you. Okay, so now we're gonna apply our stencil. Um, you'll notice I, have a, I made these stencils ahead of time. So I have a white cover paper on the back and that the white cover paper actually protects my, my sticky side of the, my masking and it keeps it clean. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually gonna trim my mask on those lines and this will make it easier for me to apply this stencil. I'm just gonna take some scissors here and I'm just cutting on the line. Okay, and here's one more tip for you as I remove the cover paper, I'm using a self-stick film. So I'm using SR3000 self-stick. And I prefer self-stick. The reason why is because it's repositionable. And especially when I'm putting this on a curved surface, I can pick up the mask and lay it down. You do have another option. You have SR2000. Now SR2000, you can, you, what you're gonna do is you're gonna brush on a layer of RZ2 adhesive. And what that is, the difference is one is self-stick and the other one has a higher tack to it because you've actually applied a layer of adhesive. Now we have a textured surface here. So a lot of times that masking, the self-stick doesn't want to stick to this textured surface. If it was a polished surface, no problem. The mask is going to adhere perfectly. But with a textured surface, we have to really make sure that my, the self-stick film is sticky. And the great thing about self-stick is all you have to do is add a little bit of extra moisture to the, to the surface and it becomes very sticky, which has an aggressive bond to this textured surface. So let's look here. I have a, um, my, my mask is pretty sticky, but I want it to be a little bit more tackier before I apply it. So I'm, I actually have a chamois here and I, I, I went ahead and I already dampened the chamois so it's, it's wet. And I'm just going to lay down the sticky side of my photo mask here. And once I remove it, it's now extremely tacky. 
so I'm able to apply this to my surface. So what I like to do is I like to kind of get a little corner started. And I, what I, I do is I press back a corner of the photoresist onto the sticky side of the masking. And that gives me a little bit of a pull tab to slightly separate my stencil. Now I don't want to remove the carrier completely, I'm just getting it started. So I'm going to lay down my stencil here onto my surface. I'm going to line this up to where I want it. And I'm going to kind of start in the middle and kind of pull tight. And pull nice and tight. And then I'm going to pull this nice and tight just so it can kind of, so it lays flat. And I can actually lift this up and reposition it if needed. And that's the beauty of cell stick. You can use either mask, cell stick or SR2000. It's just whatever you prefer. So now I'm going to start to peel up this carrier. And by peeling the carrier, it's going to allow me to kind of really press this mask and position it on the surface. So I'm just going to kind of peel this away. All right, and I have a little bit of wrinkling. That's okay. I'm going to pick this up. And then now without the liner, I have a little bit more flexibility with my mask. And so now what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to use my fingers and then just start to press my design to make sure they're all secure to the surface. And then I can peel it back up and then stretch it just a little bit just to make sure that I have the wrinkles outside the design. Okay, once I have my mask down, I can take my clear liner, place it back over, take my squeegee, and now I can apply pressure on this surface to make sure all my areas are nice and secure. You want to use pressure when you're squeegeeing your mask, especially when you're using a self stick because again, you don't have that layer of adhesive. So you have to make sure it's secure to the surface. So take your squeegee and apply pressure. Now you can have wrinkles in the mask that's not going to hurt. Um, your design, you want to make sure that your wrinkles are outside of your imaged area. Okay, so that looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to tape this up and get it ready for blasting. I like to use the blue vinyl tape because it's durable and this is a powder coated surface. So it's going to take a little bit of time to sandblast this. We want to make sure that we're not going to blast through the tape. So I'm covering just the exposed areas here. And then I just have a little section here at the bottom. And what's great about this tape is that you can rip it easily or tear it easily in sections. And the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a wire wheel because I have a lot of negative space here. And the wire wheel roller, what it's going to do is just, it's just going to perforate or tear up my thin plastic we call a membrane. And in case there's any air bubbles there, it's just going to release those air bubbles. And now this is ready to go. I like to do one final inspection. I just kind of look at all my different images just to make sure they're nice and secure to the surface. And if I see something lifted up, I can certainly press it down with my finger. And the other thing that I'm looking for to see if there's any exposed area that's not supposed to be exposed. So you want to make sure that your tape job is good and that your mask is laid flat. So everything looks good. I'm going to start blasting this. One thing to keep in mind when you're blasting is to make sure where are you going to put your fingers because it's a big design. So I like to put my fingers on the taped area. If I were to put my thumb here on the design and rotate the glass, I have 
the option here of kind of moving that design and I could start to lift it up. So when the sand hits it, the mask will wanna come up with it. So I wanna make sure that I keep my fingers away from the imaged area and on the tape when I'm blasting. Uh, important note when you're blasting is to make sure that you're always blasting straight on at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna actually use the sand to actually compress that mask further to the surface. So that's really important you need to keep rotating your design and blasting nice slow passes. We're gonna actually blast through the powder coating. So you're gonna to start to see this blue color here turn um, a light blue and then a light gray and then eventually a dark gray. So that's the goal is to blast away all the powder coated surface from all these images. So let's get started in our cabinet. I'm gonna be blasting in our 2034 VXA. VX stands for Vortex. Vortex is great. It's an air wash reclaim system. It separates your dust and debris from your usable abrasive. So it gives you more of your usable abrasive back in your cabinet. Very efficient. Um, the next thing you're gonna look at is A, 2034 VXA. A is adjustable. The cabinet actually, with the push of a switch, you can actually adjust this cabinet to wherever you feel comfortable. If you wanna stand, if you wanna pull up a chair, but it's adjustable and it has a range of about 12 inches. So you, it goes pretty pretty wide with the adjusting that cabinet. It has a built-on pressure pot, which automatically recycles the abrasive and it has a um, built-on regulator. So that includes your blasting pressure and it has a moisture trap on that. Very important. When that incoming air comes in from your air compressor, if you have any moisture in that, it will capture it in our moisture trap and then self-relief. So it's a great feature and I love this cabinet and let's get started blasting. Okay, so let's talk about paint. I chose for this project a paint from a brand called Montana. It's a hardcore paint. It's black satin. And the reason why I chose this paint is because it's a high gloss. And I wanted a high gloss finish for this particular project. I'm a huge fan of the paints from Art Primo called Belton Molotow paints. And those are like a matte finish, most of them are. So when those paints dry, they dry really quick. The high gloss paints are gonna take a little bit longer to dry. So you always wanna make sure your, your paint is completely dried before you peel off your stencil. Okay. This is looking really nice. I love the black against this seafoam green color. Now I'm using a picker to pick off all of these little pieces of photoresist film. And the stencil is pretty laminated uh, to the surface. And that is because I used uh, moisture to dampen the stencil originally. Uh, so it can become sticky against this type of surface. Now you don't have to use a picker. You can actually soak this in water as long as your paint is thoroughly dry. Go ahead and soak it in water and this mask will start to soften, it'll make it easy to clean up. 
So you don't have to sit here with a picker doing what I'm doing. Looking at this, I love it. I love all the flowers, the leaves around this whole design. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm just gonna put a little bit of glass cleaner. Take my napkin and just kind of wipe it clean. You know, I was really excited to put a mask around the whole tumbler, but then cleaning it up, I'm like, did I really need to do that? But I did. It's going to look great. It's going to be a great project. And I love the design around the whole tumbler here. And looking at this, I know exactly where I'm going to pick up for part two. I'm going to put a stencil right over this design and we're going to create a wow factor for this particular piece. Okay, so I have my metal tumbler. Uh, my powder coated metal tumbler and completely sandblasted. Now think about what you can do. You can take your design, you can take a logo and you can place whatever you want, a pattern on your metal tumbler. I have a Yeti here, but any tumbler will work. Place your stencil, blast it, paint fill it, and now you have an amazing piece, which I love this piece. So I'm going to do something different now. I'm going to take a stencil and I'm going to apply it on this surface. We're gonna blast through that and I'm gonna blast away the coating, I'm gonna blast away the paint film, I'm gonna blast away this etching and I'm gonna make this mask, this text on here, really pop. It's gonna stand out and I'm gonna use some paint as I always do. So get ready, we're going to take this mask and we're gonna do a double blast on this particular project. So excited to clean this project up. I'm just starting to remove the tape. So I've added the, the pink paint on the text. Now I'm just peeling this mask up and we're gonna clean it. This is looking really nice. I love this color. Just a bright pink. Um, this paint was actually called Tella Magenta from Art Primo. Very girly for this project. <laughs> Look at this piece. It looks absolutely amazing. You have the seafoam green, the black brings it a beautiful contrast, and then the vibrant pink just makes the whole text and the pattern just pop out. So this looks, this looks great. Thank you for spending some time with me in my workshop. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. We just took a simple powder coated metal tumbler and then we created a beautiful pattern um, with some vibrant colors here. You can do the same. If you do a project, let us know. Share your projects with us. Uh, we're on Instagram, hashtag Raisist, and we're also on Facebook. Post your pictures. We'd love to see what you're doing.